if mm. I needed to like index the gears, all I do is go to YouTube, mm. learn how to index the gears and then like adjust the high and the low, uh, this and that. Today's interview is quite interesting because Mini has done a lot of research. This is by far wow. the most interesting one because I think uh, she has prepared extremely well for this, even more than me. I more or less only want endurance bikes. Uh, why? Because aero, okay, this sounds harsh, but for me, I'm always like, if you want a more aero riding experience, you know, tuck yourself in. If you want a climbing bike because it's light, do your best to shed unnecessary weight. Um, I'm not a weight weenie also. But anyway, so I don't need a climbing bike. I don't need an aero bike. And I really wanted an endurance bike because I do endurance rides. Okay, so in general, no matter which bike brand, I will always look at endurance bikes, whether the Canyon or Cervelo. What's your next bike? Evil question. <laughs> no, no, no. At which Audex will you stop? 500, 700 or 1,000? Oh, actually I set myself a personal goal before booking an interview stop with you. Wow, okay. I told myself I will only come after I do 600. How do you keep yourself motivated to go for such long rides? Because for me, when I did 200, I was like, I'm a third level of TMT. I was like, it's so hot. I'm so hungry. I just want to go home. But you know what? I got to get this uh, Strava bed. I keep seeing you on TikTok. What is your source of motivation to cycle regularly? Oh. Besides the S5, do you think the rest of the Cervelo bikes just looks too bland or not pretty? Does branded Lycra imbue cyclists with more watts? And uh, tell us what do you what do you wear? Oh. How did you become an influencer until... You got a discount code oh. from Antro. What's the discount code? Okay. Hey everyone, before we continue to the rest of the episode, if you have ever thought about boosting your investments and diving into the world of trading, this video is for you. Imagine a platform that's just not about investments, but also a name you can trust with your personal data and payments. Well, that's Okta for you. More than 40 million accounts, 60 plus industry awards, and covering over 180 countries. Okta is the real deal. Let me show you this sleek and user-friendly Okta trading app. It's got everything you need for successful trading, from stocks to cryptocurrencies and precious metals. And guess what? You can access it on the go, both on Google Play and the App Store. Now let's talk about your money. Your funds are always credited to your account, and the best part, you can withdraw it whenever you want. Okta believes in giving you control. I've been using Okta and let me tell you, trading is far from being easy but also rewarding. Look at what I've earned. But note, it's a result of long journey with not only earnings but losses as well. And here's a little secret for you. Use my promo code CYCLING for a whopping 100% deposit bonus. And for an extra treat, scan this QR code right here for a swift download. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on this. But remember, trading involves risks. Only invest what you're ready to lose. Do your research because this is not financial advice. It's just our way of letting you know about this exciting opportunity. Dive into the world of Okta and let your investments soar. Now, back to the show. All right, today we've got Minyi. Minyi, welcome to the show. For some reason, I'm sitting on the guest seat. This is the very first. <laughs> when I first walked in, uh, Does Minyi, it feel weird? It, it does, it does. It looks like I'm talking to myself on the other side. <laughs> now I know what the, the guests uh, uh, look like yeah, yeah, yeah. on the other side. But anyway, thank you so much for coming. I've seen some of your uh, social media mm. content on TikTok. One very memorable one, which I think, I believe is the most popular TikTok video you have. is the one where you were rapping about it. <laughs> was it your first time rapping about it? No, so I've done it uh, semi-successfully before, which is exactly why I know that I don't want to do it by myself for this one. Mm. Yeah, it was, so the one that I did was a long time ago. I forgot which bike or like what was the bar tape handle. Um, but so for that video that you saw, which is now my second most popular, there's a more crazy one. Um, but for this video, actually from the start when I was making the video, like when I was so-called instructing people how to wrap the bar tape, I already knew the end game was I'm going to bring it to the shop. Okay, so it was yeah. scripted? Yeah, so I definitely planned to bring it to the shop mm. because, so number one, I don't have electrical ta tape at home. Mm. Like the one that I used for my first ever bar tape wrap was old, so it kept falling out. Oh, I remember now, it was a brown color bar tape. Mm. for my Kenyan. Uh, yeah. So this is my carbon bike. The Kenyan is the aluminum bike. I see. Um, but yeah, so the electrical, electrical tape was uh, not good. Um, this is also a bit stiffer. So I was like, I can't do it as perfectly as I would like. Mm. And also the bar ends, um, when I tried it at home by myself, uh, I was like, wow, this is not going in and it's not going to stay inside. Mm. Yeah, so I was like, please, for $15, <laughs> I would like a professional job. So do you think you can wrap about it now? Yeah, actually I can. And honestly, for all kinds of bike uh, maintenance, I mean, even back when I was using 
uh, like a mountain bike, mm. if I needed to like index the gears, all I do is go to YouTube, mm. learn how to index the gears and then like adjust the high and the low, uh, this and that. Yeah. Let me guess, it was the Park 2 guy who showed you how to do it. I don't think so. No? <laughs> yeah, it might, I, it might be. I just, I just go to like whichever video is yeah. at the top. Yeah, so, so I guess you, Park tools. You ride mountain bikes? Um, when I was in Sydney, I bought a bicycle, which actually turned out to be a hard hill mountain bike. And I use that to cycle on the road, on the pavements, as okay. a commuting bike. So just commuting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All so right. not, not like actual MTB, gravel. Okay. Can you maybe tell us why you're sitting mm. on my seat? Oh no, <laughs> so embarrassing. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Hopefully the mic didn't peak. Um, so the thing is, over the years, uh, having done shoots, productions for many, many years, I have come to realize that my better side is my left side. Ah. So I will look at you the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just like my wife, she always says, so we take photo, make sure I'm on the left. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. So you said you do production? Um, on the side since I was 16. Okay. What kind of production can I can ask? Um, whether it's short film. So I used to be a model in an agency. Oh. Uh, and why I make that distinction is because, I mean, when I was 16, that was more than, okay, that was like 14 years ago. So I'm 30 now. Um, so back then, actually, so nowadays you have a lot of so-called influencers who uh, do their own photo shoots, this and that. But actually back then, um, it was really quite a different world. Mm. And yeah, I guess, yeah, people join agencies. Um, so I've done those, like photo shoots. I've done uh, catwalk shows, uh, short films. What, is, what else have I done? TVCs, advertisements. So TVCs are commercials, TV commercials. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, I wasn't thinking of bringing it up, but now that you're on it. Um, so during Chinese New Year, actually you might not know. So during Chinese New Year, if you watch TV, which you might not, uh, or if you, I don't know, if you look at YouTube videos, you might see uh, an advertisement where it's very over the top, it's super bombastic, and it's set in like a kitchen, and the bad guys are wearing face masks, and there's a lady in white who is uh, beating up the bad guys. Have you seen that one? No. Okay, I'll show it to you later. Yeah. Um, so I, that was my most recent advertisement. Wow. Yeah. So are you still getting a lot of gigs for all this? Uh, so it's a really a side thing. I, can't, I don't even do auditions. So for that one, the reason why I did that project is because I did an earlier advertisement uh, and the character in the two advertisements are the same person. Mm. Yeah, it's like Guardian of Health. You right. know? So they, the concept was a very like Kung Fu, yep. Nui Xia kind of mm. vibe. Yeah. Read my production set. <laughs> wow, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the GoPros, like it's really fun that you have an actual camera yeah. with the amazing handle. Like that looks so ergonomic and comfortable and sturdy. And you have GoPros also. It's yeah. so fun. Well, these are my personal GoPros that I take on my rides, but I guess I have to sacrifice it for oh. interviews. Yeah. So you're using them very well. Very yeah, well utilized. Just trying to get the different directions. Uh, mm. It's mainly a one-man show, but my wife takes the photos and helps me out with the setup. So credit goes to her. So, nice. Um, okay, so today's interview is quite interesting because Mini has done a lot of research. This is by far wow. the most interesting one because I think... Uh, she has prepared extremely well for this, even more than me, because she sent, she posted on IG saying that she, she was preparing for this, uh, anticipating all the questions. So I was like, I, I replied to her IG, I was like, can you send me the questions? Maybe mm. we, I could use those questions for the interview. So I've got 25, you, you prepared 25 questions, which I have ran through against my IG story. So I removed the duplicates, mm. but I'll use this okay. to guide my interview. The first question that you prepared, <laughs> when did you start cycling? <laughs> mm, okay, so I will answer this, but let me, uh, my disclaimer is that, um, so all these questions are questions that I predict people will ask mm. on the basis of what people have asked me also, whether it's on my Instagram stories, ask me anything, monthly series, or whether it's on TikTok live streams. So actually I find that this is really a common set of questions. Yeah, especially people who know the kinds of rights that I do, which I guess is a, a subsequent question. Okay, so how, when did I start cycling, right? Um, I think many children in Singapore, you, your very first ride is when you're a kid, you go to East Coast Park with your family, you ride a bike. So that was my very first experience. Um, but in terms of like, you know, as, as an adult, young adult, um, I first started cycling regularly in about 21.5. So the circumstances are a bit different because I was in Boston, where the public transport isn't great uh, in terms of buses and trains. Like they take really long. On the weekends, the bus comes by every hour. 
But what is good is actually the infrastructure for cycling. You have what is called um, sharrows on the floor, where it's not a cycling lane, it's not a separate lane, but on the road, they paint arrows with a bicycle logo just to remind people that, hey, share the road. Yeah, so um, because I wanted to get to places, I wanted to go to my rock climbing gym, I wanted to go buy groceries without having to wait for the bus. Uh, and also because I guess I was physically able to cycle. Uh, so I just bought a mongoose mountain bike and this one was a actual bike with like full sus. Um, so I just bought it off Craigslist and uh, that's how I started cycling as a part of my life, like part of my lifestyle. Um, so that was that. Uh, I lived in Sydney for a while or so, and actually Sydney is also really nice for cycling. I basically, in, in my one and a half years there, I very rarely took the bus or the train. I would cycle anywhere. I would cycle to Bondi Beach, which is, if you cycle there, instead of like taking the train and then taking the bus, it's actually like all the way down. So the road goes like zoom. Mm. Uh, but in a way, cycling culture can be very casual in other places. Uh, I find that in a way it's like very grungy because everyone just does it. You have like really banged up old bicycles that people have been using for decades. Um, so that was just nice also. So it didn't feel like, oh, I'm a cyclist. It just felt like this is how I live my life with a bicycle. Yeah, wow. so, that, so Sydney was about 21.6, 21.7. Uh, when I came back to Singapore, um, I also have, I also got bicycles here one was a bike that I got from Sydney and I liked it a lot, so I bought it back to Singapore. Um, but I also have a foldable bike, which I bought because I wanted to go to Taiwan to cycle. Mm. So this is a bit bad decision-making, but my decision back then was instead of renting a bicycle in Taiwan, because actually it wasn't expensive. It's just that I didn't do the homework. I was like, you know what? I, don't even, I won't even look, but I, just, I will simply buy my own bicycle, bring it over, um, so this is really like a timeline of my cycling journey from like commuting on mountain bikes, but using them as hybrid, using them as commuter, uh, to cycle touring mm. in Taiwan. Uh, and then eventually my road bike phase kicked in during COVID. Like I think many people, whether on your show or elsewhere, um, September, 2021, I think thereabouts is when I graduated from my foldable or my mountain bike, uh, the hardtail one, from using that to ride on PCNs to, to getting a Kenyan aluminium road bike. Uh, so that was my very first time using drop bars. And from there, I just, I guess I got more, like I cycled more and more and more. Um, and on that same Kenyan aluminium road bike, I did my first ever 200 km. I did my first ever 300 km. Um, and I guess there comes a point in time in your cycling life where you're like, okay, I realize I'm cycling a lot. I realize I am doing more and more Malaysia rides where sometimes the roads can be bumpier, where sometimes when it's raining, I wish I had these bricks. Mm. Although honestly, that wasn't my personal sentiment. Uh. <laughs> Back then I was like, my bike is perfect. You know, what's wrong with my red bike? Which was secondhand, by the way. Um, like, why do I need these bricks? I don't need any of this. I don't need electronic shifting. Um, but eventually one day, <laughs> Uh, again, on Carousel, I saw a great deal uh, for this carbon uh, endurance geometry disc brakes bike. And so last year, end of last year, I graduated again from the aluminium road bike to this. So yeah. you see, yeah, wow, okay. Uh, mm, very, sorry, very, no, no, very interesting. I'm just trying to gather my, my thoughts and questions. So you started off uh, doing a lot of commuting. That's how cycling was introduced to you. Yeah. And then uh, you said during COVID, you got into road biking. Um, but if COVID did not happen, do you think you would, you would have picked up road biking? Oh, thank you for the question. Yeah. I've never had that asked of me. <laughs> I'm so glad. Okay. <laughs> ah. <sighs> Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. So the last, one of the last few trips, like overseas trips I went on before COVID was Nepal. I went to hike Annapurna base camp. Oh shit. And before that, I would go like Japan to ski, this kind of stuff. Uh, 
not that I have like that much disposable income. It's just that I choose to spend on all these things. Mm. Um, but I like that kind of life. So, okay, back to Sydney again. So I would go to like Mount Kosciuszko National Park, which if you know Australia, it, it's somewhere in Melbourne and it's like very nice, a lot of peaks. So actually I love moving, hence the IG username. But I love like doing things. I love being physically active. Uh, before cycling, I used to rock climb so much. Every other day, I would be cycling to the gym to rock climb. So because of COVID, because we cannot travel and go hiking and trekking, because people cannot, uh, not me, I don't dive, but because people cannot dive, I think um, it really made people have to figure out what can I do in Singapore? And if we really just like rewind the time, uh, remember back then you cannot even walk, you have to wear a mask. Um, so actually cycling is one of the few things where you feel that freedom. Uh, and the thing is, I honestly feel like cycling in the first place gives you that freedom. Mm -hmm. Because when you move at that speed and it's human powered, actually you feel very empowered. Yeah. Do you have friends who were cycling already? Like what triggered you to pick up cycling? Mm. Why, why cycling in specific? Um, so when I was commuting, and sometimes actually I commute with like a lot of load. Uh, so back then, it was purely uh, like a lifestyle. Like if I wanted to go grocery shopping without waiting for the bus, this is my best form of transport. So back then, it was really like me, myself, I want to do this. In terms of picking up cycling, okay, when I went to Taiwan. So by the way, when I went to Taiwan with my foldable bike, that was my first ever time in Taiwan. And I went to cycle by myself the bottom half of Taiwan. Mm because I think nobody wanted to join me. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not going to wait for people to join me. I'm just going to go. Um, so in a way, it's quite self-directed, like even road biking, but credit where credit is due. I think without having a group who also are with you on your cycling journey, it's very hard to sustain. And it doesn't have to be a massive group. You don't have to join like a really, really huge group. As long as you have someone who is also going to be your cycling buddy, Hmm. to cycle with you and go have supper with you after that, I think it's so much easier to want to, you know, after the ride, you had a great time. What's up? What are we going to do next weekend? Hmm. Yeah. Right. So, wait, sorry. Did I answer the question? I guess. About, yeah, yeah, about yeah. cycling buddies. Yeah. So it wasn't like a, I don't have many friends, like existing friends who are like, yeah, we're all avid cyclists and we all go cycling together. Uh, but I've met many people from cycling. Hmm. That's yeah. great. Mm. Um, so, okay, then you got the, your first ever road bike was the Canyon. That's yes. The, uh, it's aluminum. like red, yeah. Okay, uh, why the Canyon? <sighs> why? Uh, definitely no specific reason. I think I was, in a way, I have like some criteria, you know, like maybe I don't want certain brands because they're too expensive or I don't like how long the word looks. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like I just, yeah, there's, there's a lot of like quirks that are irrational. Um, so within my price point and colors, like paint jobs, I found a suitable listing on Carousel. Yeah, I don't recall if I was, like if that was in serious competition with any other listing, but it wasn't, right? Yeah, but I ended up with that bike uh, and I bought it over from a guy who like upgraded to a giant, I think TCR. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, no, no strong reason why specifically this bike. But I think one more thing I will say about my Kenyan road bike is that it's the Kenyan Endurace Aluminium 7.0 from I think like 2020, 2021. Um, so when I very first started cycling, uh, I guess even now also, I love long distance riding. And I say this with the caveat also that I don't, I've never done more than 360. Because some of the people in the Audex riding groups, they do 600. Mm. They do uh, Paris, Brest Paris, 1002. Mm. And even in Malaysia now, I think the signups have opened for the Brevet 1000 km, right? So I do long distances, like, but actually it's the shorter end of the long distance. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so just want to make that clear also. <laughs> Uh, why? Okay, we'll probably get into that, that mm. a little bit. Um, but let's let's talk about the bike first yes. before I, I run through all your questions. Mm. Um, people might be reading already. So tell us about this. So this is a Cervelo Solvis. Uh, Caledonia 5. Oh, sorry. Caledonia 5. Yeah, 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 no worries. <laughs> uh, it, okay, uh, why the Caledonia and run us through mm. the components and why you got them? Okay, so to be honest, actually someone in our cycling group, I mean, there's, there's many groups, but there's one particular guy who had the Caledonia 5 also. Uh, the paint job was, I think it's called Oasis. 
So it was that green, kind of like shiny green blue. So number one, it was pretty. So I already started looking at it. Number two, it was an endurance bike. So I more or less only want endurance bikes. Uh, why? Because aero, okay, this sounds harsh, but for me, I'm always like, if you want a more aero riding experience, you know, tuck yourself in. If you want a climbing bike because it's light, do your best to shed unnecessary weight. Um, I'm not a weight weenie also. But anyway, so I don't need a climbing bike. I don't need an aero bike. And I really wanted an endurance bike because I do endurance rides. Okay, so in general, no matter which bike brand, I will always look at endurance bikes, whether the Canyon or Cervelo. Okay, so that's, that is the answer to like why Caledonia 5. Um, then I think actually, um, what else? Uh? Also because I found this on Carousel. Um, so in a way, I... I really, in a way, I'm practical, even though cycling is a poisonous, toxic hobby that is impractical. Um, but I'm practical in the sense that I like to find things through Carousel. Uh, this was also, so in a lot of times when it comes to finding things on Carousel, it's a, like a match kind of thing. Like if it's there and if you like it, congratulations. Uh, so sometimes my shopping is limited to what is available on Carousel. And this was actually... I think it was up for many months and nobody wanted it. It's a new one? New bike? Yeah, it's a new bike. Uh, I think partly because of the sizing, maybe size 51 is uh, not popular, like people need 54 or something. Um, but yeah, so speaking of new and all that, uh, I think for the carbon bike, I was thinking, you know what, as much as I love buying used or like pre-loved, uh, for carbon bikes, I guess I will not buy secondhand, just in case. Mm. Yeah, okay. although I did take a look at a BMC road machine, uh, but in the end, I decided against it because the color, like, I couldn't love it. I couldn't love it. Yeah. Yeah, but this one, I love it. So this is from uh, Carousel, a new bike. Uh, was, yeah. Did it come complete or do you have to build it up? Oh, so it actually, the funniest thing is I bought the frame only from the guy on Carousel. Uh, when I went to pick it up, the people who were helping to, you know, facilitate the transaction, they, for whatever reason, it came up that I actually have a group set. Then they were like, oh, in that case, do you want to buy the wheels? I was like, oh, you have wheels? Yeah, because when, we, when I was talking to the seller on Carousel, we were only talking about the frame. He listed it as the frame. Uh, but so even though I walked into the shop thinking I was picking up my frame, in the end, I walked away with the wheels and the frame. I mean, when I say frame, I mean also like the handlebar, the frame. Yeah. Uh, saddle, I think, do I have the stock saddle? I don't recall how, like, what did it come with? I guess nothing at all. Oh, I borrowed a saddle. Okay, very economical. Great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's how I assembled the bike parts together. Wait, so you said that uh, the group set actually came with the bike? No, so I got the group set from Shane. Okay. From Shane. Yeah, so he, I don't know where he got it from, but he managed to get one group set for me. And he also built up this bike. Mm. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's talk about price. Because the reason why I bring that up is uh, because when I posted the IG story, I listed the price there as well. Mm. So people know to ask the right questions. And this guy uh, privately DM'd me and said, do you get the price right? And I'm like, oh, why? I'm not really familiar with Velo's pricing. And uh, he said, no, because I have the same bike and I don't think that's the right price. So how much do you pay for the whole? What's the, what's the price of the whole build, the one that you gave to me? If I, I recall, so the whole build, uh, okay, group set frame, wheel set, the whole build is 8,000, if I'm not wrong, it's 8,175 mm. thereabouts, which includes labor to build up the bike. Thank you, Shay. <laughs> so yeah. uh, people- Excluding the power meter, yeah. which, oh, the power meter, I also got it secondhand mm. from a friend. Um, so what happened was I was thinking aloud on IG, you know, like, should I uh, take the poison and go find a power meter? And then one of my friends actually messaged me to say, hey, you know, I have multiple power meters. I have the crank-based one. I have the pedal-based one. And I don't think I need so many. So how about I let go my single-sided Favero Asioma to you? And I was like, <laughs> where and when? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so 8175 yeah. is really the group set, wheel set, and frame. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I guess people who are watching who have this bike or you think the price is not right, do comment and uh, <laughs> we'll read the, mm. the comments. But... <laughs> Would you say this is the, uh, this is below market price? I think so. Reason? I don't know how much I saved, but I think definitely at least a thousand. Mm. 
so back when I was deciding, should I buy this or the BMC that I saw and decided, no, the colour cannot, uh, I really broke it down, like every component, the price, because I was deciding based on like price, I was deciding based on how much can I live with the BMC colour or how much do I love this to the extent that I would pay more for it. Mm. But in the end, because the wheel set was much discounted, mm. so I, I actually, you know, price did not become the factor that would stop me from getting this. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's your height? You, you are quite tall. I'm and 170 cm. Okay. And your inseam, do you know that? 80. 80? Yeah. So this is a size 51. Uh, did you go for a bike fit? How do you know this was size for you? Ah, so the beautiful story is, so a lot of things happen in this studio with, with Gary and Shane. So I went to Gary to bike fit my Canyon. Okay. But it, it, at that point in time, I still wasn't actually set on upgrading. I was still in the denial phase of like, uh, no, I, I will never need to upgrade. I will only upgrade if I crash my Canyon, that kind of phase. Uh, but I guess being very facilitative and help, helpful, um, using the retool machine, I experienced the Cervelo Caledonia 5 geometry. Um, so while doing the bike fit for the previous bike, I already got a taste of what it feels like. And I was like, yeah, okay, this is nice. Mm. Yeah, although I guess, honestly, how wrong could you go with a bike geometry, you know? Unless it's the wrong size, then you will really feel weird. Mm. But I personally am not very sensitive to changes. Uh, actually, on that note, so when I went to Gary, we realized that actually one of my handlebars was like higher than the other, which was causing me shoulder pain. Well, wait, wait, how is that even possible? I think I must have dropped the bike. Oh, okay. The aluminum bike. Okay. Yeah, at some point in time. Yeah, so okay. this kind of stuff, I, I feel like my body is not sensitive to, um, or like I have high tolerance for uncomfortable positions. Mm. Yeah. So you, can I say that that was a pre-bike fit? In a way, yes. Okay, so you knew you were going to get this bike, so you told Gary, like, uh, can you try to set it up on the wow, YouTube? I think it was more, it was a more uh, uh, benevolently poisonous environment where they were like, hey, try this one. Ah. Try this bike. <laughs> so the Caledonia 5 was one of, I think, two different uh, bike models that we tried. Mm. I don't recall what was the other one. Oh, okay. It was the BMC. BMC. <laughs> Which model was the BMC? Uh, definitely it should be the road machine. The road machine. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so because of that, that pre-fit, you knew that, okay, this is the size for me and yeah. uh, it was right. Otherwise, actually, on yeah, I guess now thinking back, uh, I think I was also, um, one thing when you are paying thousands of dollars for a bicycle is you, you don't want to get the wrong size. Mm. So I think, yeah, the prefit helped a lot to reassure me that, okay, it's okay to bite this purple bullet. Okay. But when you saw this on Carousel first, was it already in this size or you were just very lucky that it was the size that- I was that very lucky. Okay. It was 51 and no one wanted it for months. Right. Yeah. So you had a lot of uh, negotiating power. A little bit. And at that point in time when- uh, when I was talking to the seller, the soloist just came out, which is why also I think he was okay to let go the wheel set at a cheaper price. Because, you know, as time goes by, this wheel set just gets older and older. So this is reserve 35 for front and back. But if I'm not wrong, the latest reserve wheels that come with uh, Cervelo's is like 37, and like it's two different numbers, like 37, 38. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, why do I even start? Okay, mm. let's let's just talk about the frame first before we move on to other parts. Uh, performance of the frame. Um, caveat: I've only tried my aluminium secondhand Canyon, and I've only tried this as my carbon bike. Mm. So, I it's very hard for me to compare. Um, I do feel the difference in terms, but you see, I'm comparing against a uh, Canyon aluminium. Yeah. Usually when people talk about frames, do they talk about like carbon absorbing okay, vibration uh, or like what, how do they, how do they <laughs> describe the- People the always want to know how stiff it is, but to be honest, I don't think we can really feel how stiff yeah. it is. Uh, do you think you can tell the difference between an aluminium and a uh, carbon? Only bike? for vibration, not for stiffness. Although the difference, but you see, it's not meaning, I, I guess it's not meaningful for me to say, oh, my carbon bike feels lighter than my aluminium. Mm. Right? Mm. Um, I think- Power I, transfer, maybe. Oh, without comparing to a different bike, I think, honestly, I think I've tried very stiff bikes. I'm pretty sure I have at least sat on one before. Mm. This one feels comfortable. It feels good. Um, the thing is, I'm also on 165mm. 
uh, and I say this because my Canyon was 170. So actually even that, you already feel a difference in terms of the power transfer. Mm. Yeah. Do you feel that your cadence is much higher? Uh, Going to a shorter climb? Maybe, crunch. yeah. Okay. Maybe much higher. And also when I do indoor, right? So now that I have this bike, I use this outdoors and my Canyon is put indoors on the trainer. Um, and every month I take part in Entro Cycles e criterium where for half an hour, I literally die on the bike. Uh, so that one, I can really feel the one, like the benefit of having 170 mm. when you're smashing down. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And wheel size, this is a 35. Uh, mm. I, I guess you got it because it was uh, a it good was, deal. It was you. a very good deal. Uh, were you very particular on the depth of the wheels? No, in fact, when, and this is all me being, uh, I guess a stick in the mud when I didn't have a carbon bike yet. Uh, I was actually... I was not interested in getting deep wheels um, because number one, I'm like, I don't really care about spending money on wheel sets. That's why I'm still with the stock wheels because I'm happy with it. Or rather, I'm not unhappy with it. Uh, but also, I don't want the crosswind. So yeah. I've, I've brought this to KL. There was a recent uh, Audex 300 at Gamula Cove. Wow, there was a descent where um, the people in my team, they were going down at 70. For me, I was going down at probably 60, feathering the brakes, mm. crying on the inside, shaking from the crosswind. <laughs> so I was like, I'm actually going to die. And I was, I was like running through, okay, if I fall, how should I fall? What's the best way? Yeah. So I feel crosswind on 35 already. Really? Yeah. So I, um, I've asked people, how do you deal with crosswinds? You see, I look, I look for the guys who are uh, not, not as heavy and I ask them also, how do you deal with the crosswind? So I know the method is to... Oh, so what someone told me is you push the handlebars forward. As in, you think of pushing the handlebars forward. Um, I don't think he mentioned anything about sitting back, but basically that was the advice. Think of pushing it forward. Mm. Did it help? Yeah. Now, now when I feel crosswind, I, I'm not psychologically scarred because I have something to focus on, which is push it forward. Do you think Singapore has crosswind in TMCR? I've experienced once. Oh, not TMCR, but I've experienced once going to Salita. Mm. Uh, and actually that was, that made me, wow, yeah, I remember now, experiencing crosswind on the way to uh, Salita, which is very, very unusual, made me be like, okay, I will get an indoor trainer. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, let's move on. So that we've mm. covered everything. Uh, Altegra, this is the 12 speed. Yes. Uh, power meter and uh, saddle. Tell mm. us about this one. Okay, so this one is the Physique Vento Argo Adaptive. So it's 3D printed and um, I usually use it on my indoor bicycle, but I'm using the chance now that we're here to swap the saddles. Yeah, because at home, uh, uh, may maybe this just speaks to my you know, laziness about maintenance, but at home, I don't really have like the good, a good setup to swap saddles. Mm. So now I finally gotten to put it on the outdoor bike. Mm. So I'm excited to try it. Um, but I think the difference between this adaptive saddle, the 3D printed one, and the one that I actually normally use, which is the Physique Vento Argo uh, non-3D printed one, is that this is actually a lot more airy because of the 3D printed, like, like the mesh thing. Mm. You yeah. actually feel it? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and also, when I was swapping the saddle, I realized that um, because there's holes, right? So the sweat actually goes through. <laughs> yeah. So I'll go home and clean the canyon. <laughs> Okay, yeah. and uh, the cockpit, let's talk about handlebar and stem. Ah, uh, yes. What are the dimensions? Um, the stem, I forgot what I sent over to you, but I haven't touched the stem since I gotten it. Mm. 90? Is that a 90? Okay. Oh, the stem is 90. Details are in the description if you don't want to find Ooh. out. Okay, so the stem is 90. I didn't, uh, I didn't do anything to change it because I guess the length is correct. Mm. And I don't know, people change the stems for the length usually, right? Not about yeah. the weight. Yeah. Okay. Some people do it for the weight uh, because the stock ones are aluminium. And if you are a weight weenie, which you say you're not, then no point changing it. If it works for you, then just stick to it. Mm. Yeah. And uh, 36 millimeter bars, right? Yeah. So I got it one day uh, when I think Chain Reaction was having a sale. Mm. So these are uh, Prime Primavera. Aero carbon handlebars. That's the one size that 36. Has. Yes. Did you guys get it together? Uh, I think it was the same time because it was a very good sale. Like I think $200. Oh, wow. Very, yeah. So I was like, okay, time to finally change the correct size. Because also um, with Gary, right, we realized that 
36 is a better size for me. Mm. Uh, but I was living with the 40 cm stock handlebars for a while until this was on sale. Was it weird coming from a 40 to 36? It's like a, such a four you know, millimeter. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't... Okay, once again, this is back to me being like, like I get very used to things, I guess, very fast. Mm. Um, but the difference, I actually feel it in the, the reach. So for a while now, uh, I've been thinking of like either maybe taking out a spacer or doing something to change where it is because when I moved from 40 to 36, suddenly now I feel a bit more like closer to myself, mm. whereas I feel like I could stretch out more. Mm. Yeah. But that's strange though because you are not adjusting the length. It's more of the width of the bars, but you find that you feel a bit more stretched out. Yeah. Okay. So it's a bit like, you know, doing like a wide arm push up. Mm. But yeah, it, it, it somehow has that effect right. on the whole system. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to some of the questions that you have. Uh, do you do other sports besides cycling, which is uh, rock climbing? <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this was an anticipated question, uh, not a planted question. Um, so I'll go f backwards, I think, meaning from now and then go back into history. Before I cycled so much, uh, right before COVID, I actually started picking up jujitsu. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. it was really fun and less dangerous than cycling. Although it was really dangerous for my hair because when you're grappling on the ground, wow, I think I asked all the girls, how do you deal with all the hair loss, they say. <laughs> yeah, so okay, just, so that's just an FYI for, for people who want to pick up jujitsu. Mm. Um, okay, so backwards, right? So jujitsu, uh, a lot of rock climbing when I was still a student. So I guess the, the passes are like six months. Hmm. So I go every, every available moment. Okay, rock climbing. Um, on the side, I would do things like trekking, hiking. I've done ice climbing, white water kayaking. But all these are like one-offs. You, you don't get to do them all the time. Uh, I used to run and swim a lot. Hmm. Uh, when, before I started cycling, I used to run once a week swim once a week, minimum. Mm. Also because I have the active SG credit. So it's free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so swimming is free. Um, so speaking of running, when I was in primary school, secondary school, I was doing track and field and cross country. So my background is actually in like 80 meter type of distances, 400 meter. Um, and then I guess cross country is whatever distance it was. Um, and then in the middle, I've actually done rhythmic gymnastics in JC. And... I guess at that point, in, when at the JC level, right, number one, a lot of people start leaving the sport because they're sick and tired of it because it's such a uh, torturous sport. Mm. So I represented my school to compete in national gymnastics, uh, rhythmic gymnastics national competition. Yeah, so these are like the different sports I have spent some time in. And now cycling takes up a lot of my time, so I don't have time to do anything else. I don't even run or swim anymore. What did you do, do triathlon? Have you, have you thought of it? Wow, I thought of it. Three but, in one. Yeah, and you know there's a joke. The joke is that why be bad at one spot when you can be bad <laughs> at three? So I've toyed with the idea of doing or trying a triathlon for many, many years mm. because you can just try a triathlon. You don't have to podium. Yep. So why not just try? Just finish it. That's what I tell myself. And then I tell you, the honest answer is uh, number one, okay, me not having a tri bike is secondary. The primary reason is I don't want to pay $200 <laughs> to do a triathlon. Yeah. But don't you think that's an achievement? Like you can, it's a bragging right. Like I did this. You know? Okay, so in terms of bragging rights, uh, I think I would not feel like it's a point of pride if mm. I just try and finish. To me, it's like, okay, that's fine. Because honestly, with endurance sport, as long as you keep going and you pace yourself, you don't overshoot a threshold and then you burn all your matches at the start. As long as you are smart about how you pace your effort, uh, anyone can finish it. Mm. You too, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I think I can. It's just mm. that I can't swim for such a long distance. Wow. It's like, a, how, how long to swim? One, one two well, kilometers? I think the Ironman ones are, okay, actually, I don't know. Yeah, but I know it's but really long. long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think if I can win or like, have a really good timing, then I would be like, wow, very proud of myself. Mm. But otherwise, uh, I will not pay $200 to join. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there are some questions on uh, you doing long rides, mm. which you, you, uh, you hit the jackpot as well. You, you anticipated that question. I won't ask it for now. Mm. Um, the next question maybe is, uh, what's your goal for cycling? That's an interesting one. Mm. 
So my goal is to train my body so that I can do cycle touring with load and do climbing rides. Mm. Like I want to be able to be physically able to do such adventures. So the mindset is a bit the same as when my... So I went to Nepal to do the hiking with my parents and their friends. Mm -hmm. So they were in... I think they were approaching their 50s at that point. Uh, so what they would do is they would meet up, go climb all the Singapore, the really tall HDBs like Dawson. So they would train their bodies so that they can have fun um, in nature. So actually, that's what I want to do. I want to train my body so that I can go and do long rides, go and do climbing rides. Yeah, actually nowadays I'm part of why I got a trainer is because Singapore doesn't really have a lot of climbs. Uh, and if you want to train climbs, having an indoor trainer can help. Mm. Uh, so that is my goal, to be able to do intense adventures. I, I can't really resonate with, with that because I don't have a trainer, which I probably should get one, just that I don't have the time to ride. Mm. When you say that you want to train uh, going, getting the elevation with a trainer, how do you do that? Because the trainer is flat, right? Ah, okay, okay. Right. So the tr what the trainer can do is add resistance. So you just max, max out the resistance? Yeah, so I don't really know the exact you know, mechanics of how does the trainer do all this stuff, but in let's say in the training programs, whether it's Wahoo RGT, Training Road, Ruby, Zwift, um, you know, the, some of the routes have elevation mm -hmm. and so you get your licks or you give your licks the chance to experience what it's like to climb at 10% for a long time. Mm -hmm. Whereas number one, in Singapore, you can't find that. Number two, in real life, uh, if you're doing that, if you're tired, you will fall if you stop. But at home, if you're tired, you, know, you're you can go lie down on the ground. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And how, what's your mileage like in a week? Mm, yeah, this is a question I get a lot. And then I always tell people, okay, let me check my Strava. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, as of today, because I cycled today and yesterday, as of today, which is, today is the 9th, 9th of June, 9th. Uh, July, July, 9th of July, as of today, my mileage for the year is 5,504 km. Uh, but my mileage is actually very inconsistent. I've had some weeks in a seven day period where my mileage is 400. Because I, if I do a 300 km ride on Saturday, yeah, then, mm. then it really shoots yeah. the whole average up. And then some weeks I have zero km because I'm traveling. Mm. Um, so if you average it out, just take 5,504 and then yeah, divide by the number of weeks. Actually, if I find my phone now, we yeah. can get a proper number. But that's, that's my yearly mileage to date. Okay. Just follow her Strava and you can mm. find everything. Yeah, okay, um, you can see the power. <laughs> <laughs> are you very strict in terms of uh, having a training schedule or do you just go out as and when you feel like riding? Mm. So I ride to have fun. And sometimes fun for me is doing 40km solo at night mm. at zone 4, zone 5. Sometimes fun for me is doing 300km at zone whatever. So I don't like people who have training schedules, you have a specific goal and then you structure your workouts to achieve that goal. Mm. For me, every single ride, I do what I feel like doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are running a little bit of short of time. Uh, we're at a 40 mark, minute mm. mark. I'll just pick one or two more, which I think is very interesting that I've never asked my guests before. Uh, and again, this is your list. What are your cycling pet peeves? Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. Can okay. I ask the next question yes, also? Yes, yes. Maybe you can ask, uh, answer it all at mm. once. Um, favorite cycling route in Singapore? Yeah, let's, let's go with that too. And then I have more interesting IG questions, okay. which you have yeah. no idea of. I can't wait to hear them. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll just go through this very fast also. Mm. Uh, favorite routes? I must shout out to Salita. Uh, I sometimes do it like once a week because it's protected, it's nice. And honestly, compared to TMCR, so TMCR is straight. And the more... I cycle, the more I dislike TMCR for whatever reason, because it's so boring, you know? It's like, I oh, love TMCR, oh, man. Okay, we won't, we won't bump into each other. <laughs> so Salita is so nice because you can swoop around the curves. Mm. Not that I'm amazing at cornering, but it feels nice to like gently swoop because it's a U shape. Yeah. So Salita, and I also really like the whole like Mandai, Lim Chukang, mm. that kind of stretch. Yep. Yeah. But it's a bit undulating. Yeah. Yeah. And generally, traffic is okay there. Yeah. I mean, in the mornings. Uh. Right. Yeah. Okay, so there's cycling routes. Yes. Pet peeves. Uh. I actually wrote out a few pet peeves, but on my IG before, long ago, 
But that one was really more to like just let people who see that IG story be aware of things that they can do to be better cyclists. Mm. Um, so a pet peeve of mine, which I mean, I, I'm not angsty about it, but I, okay, a very small pet peeve is um, if you're in a group and you're going up and down and you're in the front and then because you surge up beyond what you can hold, you surge up the hill, on the downhill, if you're in the front and you freewheel, then everyone behind you has to break. Mm. So freewheeling is a kind of, is something that I'm quite sensitive to. Uh, as someone who has softer hubs. So whenever I hear the very loud freewheeling, I'm like, uh, this person is not pacing the effort properly. Yeah. So, but this is a very personal thing. Uh, I don't think it annoys people at all. Do you think anyone else knows about this? Yeah, I, I'm trying to recall what exactly did I write in that IG story. Um, so another pet peeve, as in so generally freewheeling type of things uh, sometimes gets to me. Although I know it's somewhat harmless, I think. It's somewhat harmless. Um, another pet peeve. Uh, let me think. Um, well, actually, there's a few. It's just that when you're, when you're not being annoyed by it, you don't, you don't really retain it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, another thing that is, is a bit idiosyncratic, only some people do it. Um, so when I cycle in groups, sometimes uh, some people, and sometimes I'm not close to these people because, you know, groups are porous, right? There's, there's people coming in, I join. Um, so some people, let's say when you're rolling up to a red light, some people don't close the gap. They, they stop wherever they want to stop because they... Uh, they just prefer to leave a big gap mm. or they are practicing track standing, right? So I'm thinking of, okay, just, just in case someone thinks I'm talking about them, I'm, talking, I'm definitely not talking about you, I'm talking about someone else. <laughs> okay, so, so the thing is, um, for the people behind, I, I feel like we all expect the person to close the gap and end at a certain point. Mm. But when you so-called end arbitrarily, then people will have to jam break because mm. they were expecting to coast until here. Mm. But you suddenly make them have to, in a split second, realize that they need to jam break here. Mm. Yeah, so that's a small pet peeve also. Well, now yeah. I need to be a bit more conscious. No, 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 don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> Me, I don't go to TFC, so I won't see you. Yeah, but yeah, if I, if I recall another thing that I think is useful for public education, I'll go and write as a comment in the okay. video. So yeah. people can find you on, are uh, you active on all social media platforms? Oh, actually the tic, like TikTok, uh, I started it in like 5th May. Hmm. So TikTok is my latest one. TikTok, IG. I have a YouTube, but my YouTube is in shambles. <laughs> like it's very poorly maintained. And my, in a way, uh, my social media uh, approach is that I'm a, I'm a person or like I'm a person who cycles first mm. and a content creator second. Mm. Yeah. So I will not go out of my way to create content, mm. which means also I will not edit YouTube videos if I don't feel like it or yeah. if it takes too much time. Yeah. yeah. But I think the, the secret to YouTube, having done this for about two years now is being consistent. If not, you will fall out of the algorithm. <laughs> Wow, yeah, 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 it, yeah. It is a lot of commitment. I mean, if anyone wants to get into YouTube uh, or those who are already into YouTube, they mm. would understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'll go into the IG questions. But yeah. anyway, let's see if people want to ask you questions, where can they ask questions? Uh, so every single month, around the midpoint of the month, I run a Instagram stories, ask me anything. Okay. And I mean anything. Some people have asked me like, where would you like to migrate to? So like, any, any question. Okay. So those it, questions that we have not covered, I guess they can uh, get you on Instagram. Yeah. Or... Honestly, nowadays with TikTok, uh, I find it it's so convenient and it's so great to reply to comments in TikTok. Mm. Yeah, so whether TikTok or IG. You still active on YouTube? Maybe people can comment on this YouTube video yeah, and then yeah, yeah. you can go ahead and answer them. Yeah, I'll think of how to do that. Yeah. yeah maybe I'll do a TikTok response to the YouTube comments. Right, right. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's awesome. Okay, mm. let's, let's get into it, okay? Yes. The first question, what's your next bike? Evil question. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so just like how when I was in my Kenyan phase, I was like, I will never look at bikes. I will never buy bikes. Currently, I don't have a next bike. Uh, what I'm, interests you? What looks good in the market? Yeah, you're like, oh, okay, this might be my next bike. I don't look at bike news. A browsing Instagram? Uh, Mayo, don't have. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I think actually my next bike, uh, to be a good person, like a good girl, I will, it must be a totally different category. 
Aero. So it must be TT or it must be triathlon bike or it must be touring bike. Mm. You know, panniers, front, back, everything loaded. I forgot to ask you this question uh, mm. about panniers because when I was hanging the bike, there was a lot of scratches on the top tube. Oops. And you said you are, this is, you don't normally put your bike out like that. You have a yeah. lot of uh, things going on. Uh, yeah, tell us, what, what do you normally carry with you and mm, stuff like that? So I have two large bags. One is the Topeak saddlebag, large size. And then and the other one is the top tube bag. Mm. So um, this is actually really the cleanest you'll see this bike. Because even when I do the Salita rides, right? I just leave all the bags on mm. because... Okay, so it's two things. I don't know which one is the bigger reason. One is I'm lazy to remove the bags. They're not that easy to remove. Uh, so, because you can imagine, right? You want a secure bag, so it's like pretty secured. Um, so laziness is one reason why I just leave the bags on. The other reason is I'm the opposite of a weight weenie. Mm. I add weights to my bike. I carry unnecessary things. I load it unnecessarily. And the Topeak bags, uh, I mean, they're waterproof, they are durable, but they're not light. Right. Like each bag is 250. They're, they're heavy. So for me, it's training. It's weight training. Right. Uh, because coming, like when I was in primary school in doing track and field, right, we have ankle weights and you walk around in school with ankle weights on yeah. your legs. So part of that is the same reason why I keep the bags on. Because the moment you remove the bags, you will feel it. What are your essential items when you go for long rides? Ah, so after doing several long rides, I realized what I like to eat. So I will bring Pro Bolt energy gummies. I really like them. They're so easy to eat. Unzip the top tube bag. I mean, the, let's say the gummies are already open. Take two, pop them, eat them. Done. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely nutrition. Um, I personally always have sun protection, whether it's physical. So arm sleeves. I recently got leg sleeves. I have a buff. I have a cap. So I'm really all covered. But even with all this like physical covering, I still bring sunblock. <gasps> yeah. So, so sun protection, food, um, I guess all the other basics, you definitely have to bring them. Water mm. bottle, no need to say. Passport, yeah. no need to say. Um, sunglasses. Mm. If you're cycling from 4 a.m., or actually recently the one we did is like cycling from 2.30 a.m. Mm. until the whole day and all that, I don't just bring sunglasses. I bring clear glasses because we spend a good amount of time cycling in the dark. Mm. But you still want something to block the wind, you still want something to block all the bugs flying in. Uh, so I think clear glasses is actually something that is, uh, you won't really think about it, but it's very useful. Yeah, I personally wear clear glasses even though it's at night uh, for the exact reason that you've just mentioned. Especially sand, uh, I do a lot of TMCR, it gets very sandy there, the lorries pass by, and you get like things flying through your eyes. Yeah. It can be a bit dangerous, but people never think of that. Mm. So yeah. Okay, cool, next one. At, uh, at which Audex will you stop? 500, 700, or 1,000? Oh, actually, I set myself a personal goal before booking an interview stop with you. Wow, okay. I told myself, I will only come after I do 600. Okay. But throughout the course of this year, having done more 300 KMs and having done these 300 KMs at speed, so we're not, we're not like chilling, singing songs, high-fiving, you know? We mm. are like, bam. Mm. <sighs> I don't think I want to do 400. I don't think I want to do 600. Even though, actually, at this very moment, mm. there are people who are like gathering groups for the 400 that is in uh, end July. Mm -hmm. I am more or less probably not going to do it. But if, if I eventually do it, I'll also like leave a comment in this video. Yeah. But yeah, so I think for now, 300 km is my sweet spot. Anything more than that uh, is so torturous because it's not about the effort. Actually, physically, it's not that bad. It's more the... Can you sit on your saddle mm. for such a long time and be out the whole entire day on very little sleep? Yeah. It's a shitty feeling. What time do you normally get up just to do this, right? Uh, the most Three? recent one, I woke up at like 2.15. Oh my God. And the thing is, number one, I'm a night owl. Number two, I have a normal job Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 6.30 officially, but sometimes overtime. So on Friday night, can you imagine I'm doing my best to sleep at 10 p.m. so that I can wake up at 2 a.m. to go cycle <laughs> basically like 300 over km. <gasps> it sucks. Do you join it's her so for difficult. this, right? No. no? <laughs> He's done the 200. Okay, 250, 250 to Malacca. Oh my God. Um, okay, just a very quick side story. When I did my first ever 300 km, uh, it was so initially, I signed up last year. 
in March for 200km because it was free for women. So do you sense a theme here? You know, mm. I, I love good deals. <laughs> so it was free. So I signed up for 200 and 300. Yeah. Even though when I signed up, my max was 170. So I just, let's do it. So sign up for 200, sign up for 300. We did 200 in a pair in Singapore because mm. at that point in time, borders weren't open. During the 300, I think he had a problem with the bike. So 300, he couldn't join me for 300. But because I, I signed up already ma, and it was free and no loss to me. Yeah. So I did 300 km in Singapore by myself. Oh my God. Lim Chukang dogs <laughs> lying down on the road by themselves. Then I'm also by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm personally not a, a long distance guy. I like to do punchy, fast, quick ones and go home because I've got the job. Time. I've got to edit mm. videos. Um, but I think the longest I've done was 200 plus in Malaysia. I went to Sekin Chan with my buddies in Malaysia. Uh, but in Singapore, I've done, I think, 200. But um, it was like, I did like uh, Mandai, back down, and then go to TMCR. A few laps. I think I needed like four or five laps Torture. to... Because it was this Rafa 500 thing, oh. which I did not uh, plan properly. So it was like the last two days, I'm like, shit, I got to, you know, clock catch in 200. Up. Yeah, I got to catch up. And dude, how do, you, how do you keep yourself motivated to go for such long rides? Because for me, when I did 200, I was like, I'm a third guy of TMC. I was like, it's so hot. I'm so hungry. I just want to go home. But you know what? I got to get this uh, Strava badge of, you know, this You Rafa. got it, right? You I got, got it. it. And ever since then, I'm not going to do it. I don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Ah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do TMCR loops. Some people yeah. do like Mount Faber loops, Sentosa loops, TMCR. Yeah. Respect. I cannot do that. Okay. So what keeps me going is actually, have you heard of walking meditation? No. Okay. That? So walking meditation. Oh, actually I shouldn't talk about it because I'm not an expert about it. But it's basically where instead of meditating, like sitting down indoors, you walk, but you're meditating as you're walking. So honestly, when I'm doing long rides, it's just radio static in my head. I'm not thinking about anything. So you're not even listening to music or anything? No music. No music because... Uh, Dangerous? I, yeah, partly it's danger even though you have bone conductive, yes. But I guess I, I want my mind to be like white noise. Mm. Um, although to be honest, I guess my most recent ride also, which was somehow very challenging, I think it was the humidity. Um, you actually, you, because you, are, you have the luxury of not thinking of anything besides cycling, all your thoughts are amplified. So it's a very interesting experience to hear yourself, to be with yourself, even if you're in a group, uh, which by the way, whenever I'm in Malaysia, I'm always in a group. I will never, I will not do it solo. Yeah, even though I, I will cycle in Singapore solo happily. Is it because of safety or just because safety. of- Safety. Okay. Navigation is fine, but it's more the safety thing. Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, but yeah, so actually what keeps me going is um, that interesting feeling of you with yourself, by yourself, in your mind. Um, and also, I think, like many people who do endurance rides, uh, part of it is you enjoy this kind of pain. It's physical, it's small physical pain, but the mental experience is the interesting part. Okay, one last thing about long rides. Uh, um, as long as you eat mm. and drink, you will be in good spirits. Mm. So make sure you refuel constantly. If not, I've hit the wall before where you're just like damn sick, damn sick of everything. Yeah. Uh, that is when your blood sugar just plummets. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm. Uh, okay, maybe let's move on. Mm. Uh, I keep seeing you on TikTok. What is your source of motivation to cycle regularly? Oh, part of it is the treadmill effect. I mean, I'm just coining this term for now. So the, the scary thing about cycling is actually the moment you stop, uh, you, f like, you feel like you're regressing. So you have to keep going, which is a scary thing. Um, so that's one thing. Actually, another thing is also in general, I'm very, I must move, you know. I'm, I'm like hyperactive, but not visibly hyperactive. But actually, if I am sitting still for too long, uh, not even within a day, but like in a week, uh, if I don't move somewhere or something, I will feel awful. Like I, I just feel very... Lethargic? Like too sedentary. Yeah. So actually, moving itself is something that I need in my life. Mm. Yeah. Hence mean move. Yeah. <laughs> Although actually, okay, there was an account called like Mark Moves. Mm. So I saw him on my IG and I, I was very inspired. Um, but yeah, I guess what keeps me going is, I mean, partly is also now that I've got a power meter, partly is you want to also be stronger. You want to push the numbers. Mm. Yeah. And for me, I always look at power. I don't really care about increasing the speed because number one, um, let's say all the QOMs, right? Sometimes these QOMs are done by drafting a peloton. So for me, I won't be like, oh, I'm so sad. I, I, you know, my average speed is lower be because a lot of things affect your speed, your wind, you know, a lot of other things. 
so for me, I actually really like to look at my power stats mm. and I like to see improvement if there is improvement. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got a lot of questions, but running out of time. Mm. So let me just pick maybe one or two more, okay? Uh, but I acknowledge all the questions. Very interesting. Uh, again, you guys can comment in this video and uh, mean will answer them. Uh, besides the S5, do you think the rest of the Cervelo bikes just looks too bland or not pretty? Okay, very quick answer. Because honestly, I don't even know what the S5 looks like, <laughs> to be honest. Um, S5 is the one with the triangular... Oh, okay, bar, okay. I, think. I, I, I have an image in my head of it. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, this, this answer is very quick. I don't actually look at other bikes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I do a roast? Yes. <laughs> uh, I'll group these three guys, okay, who, who uh, question this. Heavy and expensive, sorry, not a question. Is it too heavy considered, considering its price and size? Paying 8000 for an 8kg bike, what a... Huh. Actually, yeah. I don't know whether it's a good value deal. Mm. So compared to the retail price, it was a good deal. But now that these guys mention it, I don't know. What else would I have gotten? You see? Yeah. Yeah, eight thousand dollars. Yeah, but you see, once again, uh, I'm not a weight weenie. If I wanted a weight weenie, by the way, my weight is not a secret. Like I'm very open about my weight because if I don't tell you my weight, you will think, oh, the watt's not very high. So yeah. I always tell people my weight. So the thing is, at my weight, uh, I really don't care about saving weight on the bike. And like I said just now, I add weight to the bike. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So rose accepted. Rose accepted. <laughs> uh Maybe two more. Does branded Lycra imbue cyclists with more watts? And uh, tell us what do you what do you wear? Oh, what do you so, like? So, wow, I really like PNS, and I must say their reputation is pricey, uh, and maybe some other things that are more subjective. Hmm. But that's why I rarely, I never buy full price. I refuse to buy full price. And I buy on carousel or I buy when it's on sale. Mm. Um, so I wear, I like PNS a lot. Somehow, um, number one, I think the cut is flattering for me. I've tried many brands uh, because I look on carousel a lot. Actually, cycling clothes is my passion. Yeah. Like I'm more interested in jerseys than in, you know, bike components. So you have more jerseys at home in your wardrobe than oh, your normal I clothes. recently bought another one on <laughs> carousel. No, universal colors. Oh, that's a new one. Yeah, that's yeah, up yeah. and coming, right? Yes. Wow. So, have you tried it yet? No, it's, it's arriving soon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, does Brandon give you more whatever? Actually, I think an important aspect of cycling for many people is feeling good. Mm. Like looking good will help you feel good. And when you feel good, even if, I don't know, you did like five watts less than yesterday, you will still have a great time on the bike. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, so I, I, I like PNS a lot. Okay. Uh, last question. Um, interesting one. How did you become an influencer until you got a discount code oh. from Antro. What's the discount code? Okay, guys. So if you need any like physique, HGC, Herzl products, you can use Min Moves 10 on any regular price item from these brands. How long is it Antro Cycles. Uh, at least until the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. So how, okay. So the number one, how did I become an influencer until I got a discount code? Number one, I disagree that I'm an influencer. I do not call myself an influencer. I am not an influencer. Uh, for several reasons, uh, including I put the activity first. And honestly, okay, let me just spend 30 seconds on this. If you see my IG, you will notice that there are many, very little photos of me actually cycling, cycling. Because when we are moving, I'm the one taking photos and videos of other people. Mm. And then when we are not moving, what I do is I put my phone on the ground, I take a video or I do a countdown timer and I take my own photo shoot while mm. people are buying drinks at 7-Eleven, for mm. example. Mm. So the content is really like grab and go. It's really not great sometimes, uh, but I take what I can get on these little breaks or of other people. Although I sometimes don't post the other people ones because the algorithm is like, we don't care about seeing people's butts all the time. <laughs> yeah, so, so with the influencer and the definition of it out of the way, um, I think how Entro and I became partners is... They, I think somehow, maybe because I was already wearing physique shoes or something, so somehow I entered their consciousness, their radar. And I think our vibes were, you know, complementary. And then they reached out and I was like, yeah, let's, let's do something together. Hmm. Yeah, so Entro is actually really nice. And I'm not just saying this because they, you know, lend me stuff. Um, but they, they actually support many people. They support like Burgeon Racing Team. They also work with like Nini Jiang, who's a YouTuber. 
Um, so yeah, they actually work with multiple people. Are you getting the Ridley soon? Uh, no, but actually Ridley is a bike that I look at because I follow Entro. So I see <laughs> the Ridley on my feet. Which one do you like? Uh, I, I go by paint job. So I don't even know Ridley, like whatever, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there was a paint job that I was like, wow. <laughs> they might send you one after watching this video. Yay. <laughs> and they'll ask you to come back again. Okay, again. I'll write there. <laughs> okay, before we wrap up, uh, free airtime for you. Anything that you would like to address your audience <sighs> or my mm. audience? Ah, it's so fun. Um... Wow, now that is a blank blank <laughs> space. Yes. Unfortunately, I can't think of anything. Um, Maybe let me help you out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, last wrap up of your bike. Okay. Maybe anything that you would say you would want to upgrade if money was not an issue. I think there was one question like that. Oh. Uh, yeah. And uh, overall, uh, what would you say if, if someone wants to get a Cervelo or someone who, who wants to get into cycling? But we have tell yourself back then. Ah, okay. So. Sorry, there was a lot of. Uh, no, no, no. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Um. So I think one general concept that I also like subscribe by is that actually a lot of things that you do for that will contribute to your health and fitness, you know, to you hopefully sleeping earlier because you need to wake up early. Actually, these are good investments for your life. Uh, it's worthwhile to get into them. Um, so I think in general, cycling, even though, yes, it's toxic and poisonous, but it's, it's been a very worthwhile hobby to have. Um, so yeah, for people who are looking to get into bikes, I would say, yeah, do it. And okay, I've said this actually a lot of times when we are talking in this conversation, but while it might seem in Singapore that cycling is flashy, expensive, uh, elitist, exclusive, it can be anything you want it to be. You do not have to feel pressure to get a certain brand, certain outfits, you know. Um, what's more important is obviously your experience of the sport and your enjoyment and how you build up your own engine, like your body on the saddle and not like anything but below. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess that's a very good closure for the, our, our podcast and show. Uh, Min, thank you so much again thank for you. coming on. Uh, guys, if you have more questions, either ask her directly on IG during her monthly AMA or uh, comment it on this video. Uh, round of applause for Min. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> Yo ya sé que de ti I got to stay, we got to stay away. Come on,